The rose rosette virus has a unique relationship with a microscopic mite called the rose flower and bud mite. This mite has the Latin name Phylocoptes fructophilus, and it is extremely small. It's only about one-fifth the size of a spider mite. The mite is also what we call a niche mite. So you don't find it just anywhere on the rose plant. It's actually going to be associated with the flowers and buds. And in fact, some of the distortion that we may observe on those blooms might be as a result of the mites themselves. If you were going to have a sample examined or tested for rose rosette, it's a good idea to include some blooms in your sample because that's where we're most likely going to find the mites and often the virus concentration is higher. Although there are other types of mites found on roses, this particular mite, Phylocoptes fructophilus, is the only known vector. So what that means is that it is the one that can actually move the virus from plant to plant. Dr. Jim Amrine from West Virginia University in the 1960s did several experiments where he found different insects on plants and he isolated these Phylocoptes fructophilus mites from a healthy plant, moved them to a plant displaying symptoms of rose rosette, and then when he moved them to another healthy rose, after a period of time, they developed the symptoms of rose rosette. So it showed those mites are capable of picking up something from the infected plants and moving it to healthy plants. Um, at this point, although there are some other areophyid mites that we find on roses, Phylocoptes fructophilus is the only known vector. So research is going on to see if any other mites or insects could also be involved. Now, these mites have some unusual behavior. Uh, the first thing is that the females will lay eggs throughout her life. So you may have multiple uh, mites generations present on a single plant. They often will move from plant to plant just by jumping or crawling. So one of our management strategies is actually to plant roses at a wider spacing to help prohibit that movement. So the rose rosette mites, most of the time, they are just crawling around on the plant, feeding on the blooms, crawling leaf to leaf. They can even crawl to nearby plants if they're touching. But when this plant starts to become unfavorable, uh, that it might be a little bit wilted, it just might be overcrowded with too many mites, some of the mites are going to go looking for new homes. So the mites themselves are sort of sausage shaped and they have all their legs at one end. They will actually stand up on their hind end and start waving their legs in the air. And when the right wind or air current comes along, they are going to do what we call ballooning. They're going to inflate themselves with air and blow in the wind just like a balloon would. Now, the main way that we control rose rosette is by managing the rose rosette mites, which is generally done with the application of a special type of insecticide called a miticide. So these applications usually start during dormancy. And so that's in the winter months when your roses are basically dormant, although depending on the part of the U.S. you're in, they may not be 100% dormant. Usually about a month or so before they start sending out new shoots, it's a good time to do some winter pruning on your roses. Cutting back some of the less thrifty shoots, um, hauling away some of those dead and dried leaves. After you have done your dormant pruning, you can make an application of what we call dormant oil. And this is even good for organic landscapes. Most oils are labeled for organic use. So after you have pruned, you're going to apply that oil product. Often the active ingredient might be neem oil or canola oil. And we'll apply that to what's remaining on the plant, which is mostly going to be your canes and stems. If there are any mites that didn't get hauled off in the debris that you're throwing away, the goal is that that oil will smother them. 
when the rose starts putting out new growth in the spring, then if you would like to treat throughout the season with miticides, there's two products that are labeled in most states for home gardens. These are also oils, but at that time we're applying them at the summer rate, which is a little bit lower percent of the oil. Um, these oils, again, can be used in most situations in organic landscapes. If you would like to add another product, the active ingredient bifenthrin has shown to work really well in research trials. And there are home garden for versions of bifenthrin, but you will need to check your local laws and regulations to make sure those products are labeled for roses in your state. And if you're unsure on that, please contact your local county extension office. For nurseries and commercial landscapes, there's a much wider uh, array of chemicals that can be used, applied as miticides for different mites that occur on roses. And again, consult with your county extension office for what's currently labeled in your state. As always, anytime you're applying pesticides, be sure to read the label so that you are wearing the proper equipment for making those applications. As a reminder, once your plant has rose rosette, there is no cure and we are going to need to remove and discard that plant in the trash. When you're removing it, it is important to try to put a trash bag or plastic around that plant so that none of those mites are launching off during that process. Some other just sanitation things that can be done throughout the season to reduce the number of mites is after the plants have bloomed, deadheading is useful. So this is removing those old spent blooms and throwing them in the trash. Since most of the mites are associated with the blooms and the sepals, which are part of the flower, by throwing those away, you're effectively throwing away some of those mites. If you'd like more information on management, please review other parts of this series. So if you're looking for more information, you're always welcome to visit the roserosette.org website or look to your local county extension offices for information that is specific to your state or region.